legend of the Copeland Hacienda. In the early 1900s, at the turn of the century, my family was chased out of Mexico, leaving their homes, land, and all they had built for generations to save their own lives. It was during the 1800s that my great-grandfather, John Hansel Copeland, his brothers and sons, built the Copeland Hacienda, a flourishing shipyard, and an impressive lime and chewing gum export trade. For decades, my family and the families of those who worked for my family lived at the Hacienda. Sometimes as many as four generations stayed on there. The Hacienda was a four-sided, multi-level housing structure with an expansive courtyard at the center with trees and gardens. Many children grew up here and stayed on to work with their families in one capacity or another. Others grew up to set out on their own in a very rough wild west. My great-grandfather never put out the elders once they could no longer work. Families were left intact, and even though they were not paid what they were worth, they were treated well and paid more than any other white man would pay a Mexican at that time. As unrest grew and revolutionaries began popping up out of the woodwork, my family was aware that they may have to leave someday. One such revolutionary was Francisco Pancho Villa. Reports at the time placed Pancho Villa in the north, heading toward Texas, with intentions to come back around by way of New Mexico to do a sweep of the coast to chase out the white man. Pancho Villa's plans were changed abruptly when he received word that John Hansel Copeland, owner of the hacienda and shipyard, had raped a Mexican girl. Now, even though that was not true, it was true that a ranch ad had done this despicable deed. Enraged by the memory of the man who intended to rape his sister when he was only 16, Villa informed his camp of vigilante revolutionaries that they would ride for the Copeland Hacienda near Guadalajara at daybreak. You're aware by now that something miraculous had to have happened because I'm here today to share this tale. At that time, my grandfather, Randolph Hansel Copeland I, and all his siblings had already been born there in Mexico. He and his brothers and sisters were raised and cared for not only by their mother, but also by Mexican servants. Likewise, many of the Mexican newborns were brought to my family's door and received with delight, as new life meant new workers, Mexican or American. One of the little boys was Hidalgo Hernandez, who grew up at the Hacienda, was loved by many, and admonished by others, for his energy was high and the trouble he caused was immense. He grew up without his real father, who had died in an accident in the shipyard months after he was born. My great-grandfather was his Papa John. And all fatherly discipline handed down from him on a regular, was handed down from him on a regular basis. He knew that this one would need to see the world since the Hacienda and its shipyards struggled to hold him, even as a young boy. On that fateful day that Pancho Villa decided that John Copeland would be the next white man to die by his gun, Hidalgo was standing right beside him as his right-hand man. He was a lieutenant of sorts in the Revolutionary Army. He joined Villa's Mexican version of Robin Hood and his merry men after seeing the injustice perpetrated against his people on their own land. A contrast so stark that he never imagined that Villa would ever have a reason to approach the lands that Hidalgo had called home. I'm certain that he must have felt a flush of nausea when he heard his adopted father's name and life received a death sentence for something Hidalgo knew Papa John could never do. As legend has it, Hidalgo waited until most were asleep, mounted the strongest horse in the camp, claiming to take watch. He completed a two and one half day ride without rest straight to the Copeland Hacienda where he grew up to warn the family he loved of the impending danger. It was the middle of the night when he arrived, yelling and screaming as he circled the Hacienda several times before coming to a stop at the door of his Papa John. With tears, he explained that what was coming was unstoppable and that the entire Copeland family and any white men that wanted to survive should leave now. All the families came to help pack, prepare food, and say farewell. As the sun began to crest the horizon, Hidalgo insisted that the rapist be left 
to face the justice that was coming for him. That man cursed it on him, Pancho Villa, and all who were staring down on him with disgust in what seemed to be an endless row. Without a word, Papa John drew his firearm and shot the man in both feet, rendering him immobile, yet alive to face his sentencing. As the families were loading themselves into the overstuffed horse-drawn carriages, Papa John gave Hidalgo a big hug, professed his love for this blessed son, and then asked if he remembered the secret hiding place in the hacienda that was in the space used as an office for business. When Hidalgo was a little boy, Papa John allowed him to hide from imaginary bad guys in there. That space would become a makeshift safe for important papers. He told Hidalgo to run as fast as he could to retrieve the satchel from that space. Together with his three lead foremen and Hidalgo, my great-grandfather pulled from this satchel the deeds to land and rights to business and trade, signing them all over to the four men to do as they please. And that completes my presentation of the legend of the Copeland Hacienda. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. What's your name again? Natasha. Natasha, thanks for coming. And Amanda. Amanda. And what's your name, sir? Derek. Derek, thanks. I really appreciate you guys coming in. You're